Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mucklover and thank you for joining me here in TNO, the last days of Europe, in which we are playing as Ust Sisolsk, also formerly known as Komi, or the Republic of Komi. But right now we have Lev Gumilyov, a diabolical intellectual. If you like to read about him, please go right ahead. Did you know his middle name? Is Nikolaevich? I didn't, but let's begin with the focus with uh, the war within. Let's do the state security. With the end of the weak republic. On the entrance and statement of our new order, under the combined banner of the Passionary, the time has come to begin the reclamation of Western Russia, the consolidation of Ust Sisolsk under our new order. Thus, we'll begin immediately, until we are capable of shattering any enemy that dares move against us, be they internal or external. Our foes are many, but our people are strong, and if all else fails, the awesomes below Ust Sisolsk can always be present or pressed into service for the true Russian state. Now, I've already gone ahead off screen and went through the normal Komi stuff, the Komi Republic stuff. We've already gone ahead and went through the Civil War and the coups, but it is what it is. Oh, I'm sorry. Those are the only words which escaped Elena's mouth. The defense was failing around them. Their safe house was burning. Their last desperate attempt at freedom has gone awry. Right as paramilitary groups were winning against a final garrison defending the would-be refugees. The hallways were filled with gunfire, screams, and the crackling of wood. All that they loved, all that they fought for, was finally being eviscerated in front of their very eyes. Good men died to prevent this. Worse men fought to reduce it to ash. Yevgeny coughed heavily, a stray bullet still lodged in his lung. The clenched hand grasping at his gunshot wound was becoming weaker by the second. He didn't believe that he would die here, not in some run-down records room, slumped over against a table with one of his former enemies at his side. The pistol on the ground was empty, much like the air in his body. Perhaps, if there were still some bullets left, they could fight. One last desperate clawing attempt for liberation, perhaps they could end their life. Surely whatever the fascists did to them would be worse than death. We promised, and we failed. And as Yevgeny became closer to death, the door to the record room was slammed open with a kick. A member of the fascist paramilitary, with the rays of his PPSH, filled the duo with bolts and it added to brass piles on the floor. After a quick look around the room, he looked down at the victims. Whoever they were, then didn't matter now, Russia would move on without them. With that concluding thought, the soldier exits the room and ducks his head below to avoid the smoke around him. It's never, ever easy. Ooh, we can raid Vyatka, but I don't know. Raiding Vyatka seems a bit, uh... 4,000, that's not too bad. 5 to 7 divisions just like us, but that's okay. Unearth the arsenals. Throughout our lands, there lies vast arsenals of weaponry that have been buried in bunkers to protect them from the German bombers. The arsenal beneath Uslos, Ust Sislosk and its chemical stockpiles is the greatest example of this, but there exist many other stockpiles. We must unearth these caches immediately and arm our forces with their contents. A well armed force is critical for the expansion of our state and the impending reclamation of Russia, the remnants of the opposition. Um, if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead, because this happens every single time we play as Comey and whoever we try to get rid of in terms of uh, political rivals today, we'll say. So, it really doesn't matter to us, so everyone's still alive. Just go and look at everybody here. Just spend all your people we can. That's fine with us. It really doesn't matter to me, because eventually, you, I think, if I remember correctly, you do get your PP back, which is... It's always good to get your PP back, isn't it? But secure reliable infrastructure. Well, that's really good to do. One could say that the Republic made a strong effort to deter the bombers and repair the roads that they damaged. One could also be entirely wrong. The state of the infrastructure throughout Ust Sislosk is utterly dismal, with numerous trade routes and valuable paved roads completely ignored by the old government. In favor of investing more money into government corruption, failed welfare programs, and grandiose unworkable projects. We must rectify the situation at once, repairing old infrastructure and constructing new roads to move goods faster and allow our soldiers to redeploy, redeploy more effectively and efficiently. So if you want to read about this opposition data, please go right ahead. Report concludes, as well as a visionary suppressed. Oh, Ooh, what is this? Um, I think I've already read this one before, so, yeah, I, if you want to read this, please, please go right ahead, so, okay, yeah, power vacuum for the Libertarian Socialist Party, good, if you want to read about all of these, please just go right ahead, so, report concludes, very nice, we get the PP back, as well as, uh, this is about, uh, Kosygin Alexei Nikolaevich, cool, and Vosnesinski Nikolai Alex Alexevich, as well as Chaos of a Different Kind, uh, yeah, there you go, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead as well, cool. Now, we currently have the National Spirits Luftwaffe terror bombing. We also have the Sictiv Car Arsenal, which is quite good for attacking defense on queer territory. But we also have Clash of the Shadows, which does hurt us quite a bit for political power, but not too much. So, secure, reliable infrastructure, thank you very much. And what is up next? Oh, Vologda? Oh, we actually might be able to do a gay against them. Yeah, let's try it out. And influence for the Passionary is not as high as Reformists. Passionary, because this will improve uh, the support of Lev Gumilyov. Uh, we're actually doing pretty well. We could probably... Go Oh, we can launch operations. Go and do that too. Eh, we'll do that. Why not? Hopefully, 106 goes a little higher. 
and that'll be okay. Assemble our forces. There exist elements within our state that are sympathetic to our goals and, and, and motivations, yet we're forbidden but from gaining crucial military experience by the previous government. We will rectify this as well and expand our recruitment to those that formerly would have been discharged for the radicalism and disloyalty to or by the old republic. In addition, I'm going to go ahead and read after assemble this one. Uh, yes, reform a true army. Despite everything we have done, our armament programs and recruitment programs, an army is nothing but a mob of ill-organized rabble without competent officers and quality training. We must assemble our army's high command and consult the officers of the Republican Army, who have remained loyal to us for a comprehensive new program of training and discipline for disciplining for our forces. And the German Civil War has gone on. So, if you'd like to read about pursuing Swiss law, please go ahead. Let's see him plot his way out of a jail cell. Cause you arrested. He will trouble us no more. Great. Even more stability, too. A Gethsemane. Oh. Who was it? The betrayer. Look at that. If you like to read about that, please go ahead as well. And cut and run. And this is for social democracy as well. And the German Civil War, which is very nice to see. Anything else here? Anything else? Uh, with this, imprisoned. Zidane fled the country. Bukharina. Bukharina has been arrested in prison. Arrested. Fled. Arrested. I think... We don't have to really click on this one, since we'll hot because it's we already have everybody here, so it doesn't really matter. And we're now oh we're, we're stuck at 100 percent, huh? Okay, the bombing stop. If you like to read about this, please go ahead. This happens every single time in Western Russia. Clear skies, dark clouds. I'll let things go boom. Oh, we can scavenge for loot as, as well, which is very good. All right, let's go and see if we can beat them up. We only have six divisions. Actually, we started with one extra. Well, we started with six divisions, and one of the militia divisions we have two. We actually started with three, and I already converted this one over to become a normal infantry tribute paid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. And we're going to scavenge, scavenge, scavenge. And expansion to Africa. And we do want to save our PP from here on out, which would be nice. Very, very nice. Oh, and assemble our forces, my friends. Yes, more map power. Also, we do have four-year conscription, and I've been really hammering home, trying to get away, just making sure our military is great. Uh, we're probably behind in terms of... We're actually really behind in terms of industry and stuff like that. But I've been doing artillery and just land auction the entire time. And we, like I said, we do a four-year or four-year draft. We do have that. So, do we actually make another? Wow, look at that! We actually made another division. Nice. And the Serbs rise up. Austin is falling apart. And we almost don't have artillery here, but we have a, a little bit of a nice amount of guns, which is pretty good. Um, I do want to get as many divisions out as possible because the WRF is always a pain in the big old bo booty to take out. And the South African War is kicked off. Don't you love it when you play in the first episode? Everyone just wants to kill each other. What could be better than that? But we will reform a true army so we can start working on our army professionalism as well. Also, I did, before setting this up, get two rounds of extra uh, social development for our poverty rate. So, not bad. 3.75. Power tools are looking very, very good as well. But we must go ahead and continue reading Oaths of Loyalty. There's an important question vexing the political apparatus of the state and the military apparatus alike. The quest, this question regards the oaths of loyalty that each soldier is to take. The old republic had a set of oaths dedicated to protecting and upholding democracy, the republic, and the coming constitution, which will clearly not do. However, the factions that make up our current government are conflicted as to which form the new oath shall take. The more monarchist inclined groups who wish to restore the Tsar's oaths, swearing loyalty to a crown and throne that are currently vacant. The more mainstream elements of the government, on the other hand, wishes to reword the old Republican oath to fit a newer, stronger state. There are some even elements within the state that view the Soviet oaths and their commitment to ideology as a possible model. This army must come to a decision to ensure the loyalty of our troops and a united military. Absolutely, the new national army. Cool, and I'll go in and do agricultural methods, which is very good. And Fyodor clutched the gun, his fingers numb. He trained himself to tremble less and at the right spots to keep his gun sights level. And his aim clear, but the price he paid for it was that the shooting felt less like an action and more like a twitch. The target seemed so very far away, and he thought of his new home now st further still. Loud and clear, the old voices rang in his mind. Only a man can fight for his home. Only a man can do this, and if a rebuilding of Russia needs anyone, Fyodor, it's you. His parents, his brother. The army had long been his second home, but he had never forgotten his duty to the first. The crucifix around his neck shuddered, and as the shots rang out, one, two, three, then silence. Theodore loaded his gun. It seemed he'd been mostly on point for today's rounds. The stained hammer and sickle icon that passed for a target had been shot into oblivion, its white scraps hanging on by a wire lace base. The sergeant nodded, wrote chicken scrabble, chicken scribble notes into a book, and dismissed him as Theodore left. He smiled wanly. Perhaps rifle inspection would be late today. Well, it invariably ended later than anyone could predict, and far later than anyone was ever comfortable with. At least the meals were better than that they had been that when the, now than they, they ousted that darn Bolshevik in the canteen. 
Dimitri nodded to him. As we passed into the cramped bunk quarters, little talk was necessary, and little talk was offered. Two men cleaning their weapons together, a pastime as old as time itself, and as the two traded rifle oil and cleaning brushes, there was an air of near amity. Man, I need to clean my guns. Anyways, Dimitri finished or reassembled the bulky mess of parts into its gleaming hole. Then he knelt, well, taking well-worn beads from his left pocket, and began to mumble as the beads slipped between his fingers. A prayer for the enemies, and for Sictive Car, and for the men who would lay, lay their lives betwixt the two. Fyodor mouthed his own silent prayer beside him. Very nice. The anti-Bolshevik pact. The state of Yak under Tsar Vladimir III is not an ideal ally instead. Indeed, in a less desperate situation, it would be considered an enemy to strike down as soon as possible. However, we do not have the luxury of such a delicate situation. With a growing red storm toward north, we must approach the pretender Tsar for the good of both of us. Only once the Reds are defeated, maybe we have the luxury of reconsidering our foreign policy situation. We must approach Vyak with a proposed anti-Bolshevik pact for a mutual defense and shared training on until the sacred task of casting down the communists is, of course, completed. And somehow, I don't remember, we got five naval XP, which is very weird, since we have, I mean, we have a river, but we don't have any, you know, we're not on the coast, which is very weird to me, but whatever. Very nice, and we'll go ahead and do their oaths of loyalty. Lev Gumilyov had never seen a priest quite so agitated as the one before him now. It was almost amusing, like a cat stripped of its favorite toy and left to mew in its own frustrations. Unlike a cat, however, he had no real option to leave this priest by the roadside. No, the god botherer would follow and nag at the man until one or the other expired of exhaustion, irritation, or both. He sighed, rubbed his sore temples, and turned his mind to the matter at hand. Acknowledgement of the role of the church in the oath of service is not some trivial matter. This is a matter of eternal life, for if these men do not die with God in their hearts, they will lack the resolve to carry on. The priest nodded animatedly. animatedly. Naturally, the church would like to, all fighting men to pray for the health of their leader as well. Love Gumilyov gestured for the priest to take a seat. He looked around his office for a tea sachet. Surely the man would have his tongue stilled of nothing else. Thank you for your attention, Father. In truth, I was thinking of adopting oaths from the ones most familiar to us. We are, as you know, a Christian nation, but not all of our Subjects have the privilege of baptism. My advisors have suggested a modified version of the Soviet oath. He raised his hands against the already sputtering priest. And yes, we are well aware the church would not be pleased with this, to put it lightly, which is why I was thinking of a simple oath to the Russian state, until the spiritual health and loyalty of our subjects are ready for a full oath to God's appointed trustee. It is the compromise, and I assure you, you we will think of something better, but it will do for now. Tell him to chase the cat away. He had the fears of men to settle. Have a good day, Father. My receptionist will receive you. Our soldiers will know their god and tsar. A simple oath, a seed oath will suffice. Oh, Soviet oaths are the practical choice. As much as I want to do Serov really, really badly, a simple state oath will, of course, suffice. But we must do the war with him. When a united right-wing coalition was announced, few could believe an alliance of different parties was possible. Even fewer believed this coalition could get into power, however. Those skeptics are now proving themselves right as the faction leaders feud and bicker amongst themselves. The question of what... Of when it will collapse is not a matter of if, but when. The civil servants who run the country must prepare for the coalition's disillusion and return to factionalism in infighting, ensuring that the new power struggle will not be as destructive as the old. Oh boy. Fall locked up? Sure. Wait, didn't we just do a locked up earlier? I thought we did. How's this coming along? Do we need anything else? Do we have enough equipment? We need things, five things of artillery, which is fine, actually, because we're making point one a day. We'll get that one done. No worries. No problems. Hopefully. Hey, 102, 106, not bad. Anti-Bolshevik back, we'll have to wait what they'll say, and we'll lose some stability, and Vyaka agrees, okay. Usually they say no, but... Today the forces of anti-Bolshevism make a great step in defeating even the last pocket of red in the free Russian territories. The message we have sent to the warlord city of Yatka, vaguely aligned with our ideological goals, has received a positive reply, likely coming to the realization that we are one of their few hopes for survival and flourishing in the region. They have been quick to voice their agreement for a mutual assistance pact. The developments... <clears throat> Of the moment the reply was received have been surprisingly rapid. The Minister of Foreign Affairs for the Republic and their counterpart in Vyaka have come into contact and are now in the process of scheduling the meeting in which the alliance will be officially signed. However, as often happens with these backdoor diplomatic arrangements, many of the points of the alliance have already been discussed behind the scenes. The deal will include a promise that should one signatory be attacked, the other will have to abide by the treaty and come to their aid in an to their ally. Limited military presence in the form of advisors and attaches will likely be a term. Finally, a number of economic and military support between the two nations is more than likely to be included. From now on, Vyakas fiercely stands us by us as our great ally. Good to see we finally have some friends. If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. It's pretty short, but there you go. I actually, oh, we got it. Nice. Great. Scavenge their booties. Officer exchanges? 
Uh, arm XP is nice, but officer exchanges. Our officers have, officers have faced different conditions to those of the Tsarists, and have served in the front line and border raids against the Reds in many cases. Our practical experience is a boon to us, but the Whites to our south have the theoretical advantage having fought in the West Russian War against the front on the grand scale. We have fought the Communists in the present, and they have fought them in the past. There is much to learn on both of our ends. Let us share this knowledge with our partners against the Red Menace. Very, very good. We actually have seven divisions. That is awesome. That is awesome, 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 awesome. But we have, to, we have a lot of Reds to kill off. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's not going to be good. But machines of the past. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. 2% more civility and another civvy? Yes, please. Joint army maneuvers. Our doctrine has its strength, but it also has its flaws. The more experienced units of Yaka, thankfully, are willing to help rectify the issues present in our training, supply chain, and combat techniques, while their aid to, is to be viewed with suspicion, of course. What useful knowledge they provide is precious and is to be taken seriously. If Yaka can help us fill the holes in our army's pool of skill, its aid will be greatly appreciated, which is very, very good. And since we got bonuses, this, we get even more organization. Organization. It may not seem like it sometimes, but it's incredible. Incredibly important to waging a successful campaign or battles and you know, stuff like that. But this is one of the rare times that they actually agreed. I think almost every single time I've played this, they've always said no to us, which is, you know, big sadness. But right now, we're not feeling sad. We're feeling pretty good. We got plenty of guns. Look at that, too. Nice. Actually, if that's the case, um, I want to make these guys bigger. Would we be able to do this? Three. Actually, we do have enough manpower. We can make our guys 14 combo with. So that's not bad. That's really not bad, actually. Nice. And we get some army XP, which we... Oh, we just lost them. That's fine. Cool. Followed up with the Civil War relieved, or Relived. The days of the Civil War were dark for our nation, setting the stage for the eventual national disintegration of our great country into what it is today. However, we also have a chance to reverse it. With the aid of Yadka, we shall be able to strike back and vanquish the Reds which destroyed Russia, and erase all traces of communism in our nation. The time is now. The only question is who will set the Reds' demise into motion? Their foolish action or our triumphant initiative? Oh, I guess Ukta's gone. A plastic, uh, plastic, I think that's Tukhachevsky? So, I think that's them. We guarantee each other, which is... Oh, I don't know if I really want to fight a bunch of people over there, but actually, what are we not improving? We are not improving... An Industrial, ah, technically industrial expertise is going up, but we'll make it go up even further just to make it look better down here, so. Agriculture is looking very good. Civil War really did. Nice. Russia awaits. We have prepared enough, going through all of the preliminary strokes of diplomacy and armament. Now is the time for expansion and the reunification of the motherland. Russia waits with their west open for our taking. There lies only our enemies standing in our way. There are many and we are few, but with the will of the Russian people on our side. Alongside our connections and our formidable arsenal, our state shall emerge triumphant and reclaim her fair lands. With their pre preparations complete, the only thing left to do is to issue our orders to our diplomats and generals, and prepare for the greatest string of conflicts that, shall, that we shall face yet. In which we will go demand the order submission, which is nice. Which I do want to get them and probably core them as fast as possible. There's no guarantee that we'll be able to get that done. But, you know, we'll see what happens. We will see what happens with that. Go ahead and prepare and to invade. And Russia is here. We get 10% more uh, war support. Ah, engineers, good. I got engineers just because entrenchment is so nice. But let's grab some more stuff here. Oh, that's not good. We should have got that a little bit earlier, maybe. We do have five civvies, though. That's not bad. Really seven, but whatever. You know, you know how it is. Now, Vyatka. Now they get to focus on the Aryan Brotherhood and probably some. So, oh! An 8th Division! Nice. Very nice. Um. Oh. Oh, wait. We can do Vlogda again. Okay. And you know what? It's so weird. I'm playing in West, Western Russia and we still see Viktor Larionov. Oh, we love Larionov. Don't we all? We all love Viktor Larionov. He's never done anything bad and totally wouldn't take power over if Tabriski would ever die. Or be removed. It, never. Never. Mm. Nice. We're almost done with our land doctrine, too. Relatively speaking. Get more organization. That's so good to get. And go and launch a raid. See what they say. Yes, no, maybe so. They refuse to be good to me. Demand the order of submission. The order of St. George has a cause that one may consider righteous to honor God and to oppose the anarchy that has consumed the motherland. However, they are insular, radical, and unwilling to cooperate with outsiders, viewing them as insufficiently pious at best and outright heretical at worst. For better or for worse, we must end this policy by force and issue an ultimatum to the monks of the Squirrel's Nest Fortress. Submit to our state and be free of practice their religion within our borders, of following our laws, or face our armies on the battlefield. Good. Are we winning? Are we losing? Are you winning, son? I think we're winning, son. 
Oh, they actually came up with some divisions. Too bad they suck. Ah, the government prevails. We have eight divisions. Now, that makes me feel a little bit better about fighting the WRRF, but that still does not make me feel good. <laughs> it is what it is, you know. As you probably know by now. Treasure, a relic of the past. 75 more PP. Oh, yes, please. Um, embrace the order. Well, technically, we'll have to do this eventually, so. With the Ganey settlement under our control and the order now within our jurisdiction, now is a prime opportunity to set a precedent for future religious policy. As always, the factions within our government are split on this issue, with a wide range of the theories stretching from cracking down on religion to embracing the Orthodox Church as a central pillar of Russian culture. Throughout our state, other religious groups are looking to our policy on this issue as a guideline towards what they, too, should expect in the future from our government's policies, and the order stands defined. In an unexpected turn of events, the Order of St. George has refused their demands and stands defined even in the face of our overwhelming martial superiority. They are already reinforcing their borders and preparing for the inevitable conflict, but this effort is almost certainly futile. Our forces outnumber theirs by a considerable margin, and this war is not likely to take long. Very good. But crack the coalition. The coalition, as it stands, is a complete farce. Every day. Its representatives and the National Assembly fight each other with words and with fists over the most trivial matters of policy. Notifications to the leaders of rival parties in issuing declarations of revoking our participation in the coalition will be easy to send, and the likelihood of other parties accepting is very high. The official disillusion of the coalition may mean a return to the days of constant deadlock, political infighting, and intra-party street battles. But at the very least, it will reflect the current reality on the Assembly floor. Very good. Let's go on in, guys. We should do relatively okay. Do we actually have any planes? Yes, we do. I'm glad we saw that before uh, we got into too many conflicts, because these planes are all probably going to get shot down. Keep these guys in place. Don't let them move. They don't deserve life. We've lost 160 versus 700. Not bad. And we are slowly... Wait, we're demobilizing. Why are we demobilizing? 112%. Warlord recruitment. Go, Go straight there. Kill them off. There goes Tricky Duck. Shafarovich splits. Oh boy. Well, Shafarovich dropped his pen with a sigh regarding his latest letter. It was quite possibly the most important letter of his political career. It was a make or break moment for him, and close and side would be what would crack the right in half. Shafarovich was splitting, forming his own group inside the passionary. Shafarovich and Gumilev, Gumilev had never seen eye to eye on everything, of course, and perhaps this split was inevitable. The main force binding them together beforehand has been a mutual distrust of the center and the left, after all. Without well, either of those posing a serious challenge, the craft had widened into chasms and was no longer expedient or really tenable to maintain the alliance. Across the right, the pieces fall as passionary members proclaim their loyalty to one side or the other. Most importantly, however, was which way Serov and Tabarisky would fall. Though neither commanded nearly as much influence as Shafarevich or Gum Gumilyov. Their support could be the push that would make or break one side's plan. These thoughts all rushed through Shafarevich's mind as he handed the letter to his secretary. Now was the hour where Russia's future would be decided. The real game begins. C'est la vie. So be it. And I want you... Where are you guys headed to? Hold. You are going where? You could stay there. I prefer you guys actually in Siktivkar because that's more central to the front. So hopefully we can get that integrated pretty quickly. But we'll see what happens. And we'll go ahead and do this one. Embrace the order. Yes, we will. And rebuild the monasteries. Although the monasteries and fortresses controlled by the order were grand, not even they were immune to the ravages of war and the bombings. Throughout the long decades of shame experienced by Russia, the churches and the monasteries of Gainey have stood strong, but have not escaped entirely unscathed. As a show of goodwill towards the Order of St. George, and towards the Orthodox Church in general, the more traditional elements of our government have advocated for a comprehensive program to rebuild the religious architecture of Ganey. The reception of this plan has been mixed, with more modernist elements railing against it as a waste of valuable resources. Very, very good. We have two months left, which we'll probably end up in a war before then, but whatever. And how much equipment do we have, actually? We're not looking too... We have 2,000 things of guns. That's not too bad, actually. Go and go do that one. That's fine. And go and go down to this one. And they use recon, but we also use... Uh, I don't want to hurt that, so... There you go. An ultimatum from the Aryan... Oh, Aryan Brotherhood. That's pretty weird to see, but okay. I always pronounce this wrong. I say this wrong every time I play it as an Aryan Brotherhood. I was a Permham? 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 Something like that? I can't remember. Hmm. This can't... I still can't remember. Oh. Passionary influence. Uh, let's do that. Because right now we're at 51%. Oh! Um, that's still going to attack us? Give us a few more days first. Embrace your order? Probably. Alright, they didn't attack us. That's what I thought they would do. Embracing the church. 
And rebuild them. The general staff were seldom caught by surprise. It was in the nature of their job to predict the unpredictable, to catch a curveball and throw it into the enemy's face. The aspect of the operational doctrine had been unchanged, even as the politics of the state tumbled like a loose clump of dirt in a strong base. A breeze. No one, however, had anticipated a situation quite like this. The so-called chaplains of, in front of them, self-appointed, of course, had barred the doors of a barracks after being expelled, calling down the old fire from heaven in their own defense. Apparently, these renegade priests had taken up upon themselves the solemn duty of trying to evangelize the infantrymen, beseeching them to convert for the health of the nation and love Gumilyov. They had made the fatal error of approaching a company whose ranks were dominated by the old Soviet veterans, and for that mistake they were set upon by the irritated and godless. It had taken the intervention of the military police to set them apart. A priest, left still bleeding but head unbowed, rose to speak. This is a travesty, that of the David of Russia, the bearer of the mantle of God, shall have the godless as his servants and his conquerors? This is a spiritual crisis. We demand the right to administer his medicine. A general rose to speak, still trembling slightly from his age. My men would follow the orders of our state anywhere, but to impose them upon a church they reject as a sure path to disaster. I ask for the moderation we have always seen in you. There must be a better way to rebuild Russia anew than to hang the cross upon the necks of all of its subjects. Kick the church out of politics entirely? We must follow the will of God, which I would love to do, but leave them to preach only to their fellow Christians. Oh boy. None of this really does work. We'll do Seraph just because um, he probably has the weakest support, so... Anti-Bolshevik maneuvering. The West Russian Revolutionary Front to our north represents the greatest threat to our state and the successful creation of a Russia free of communist influence, however. The likelihood that we will be able to cast it down right away is insufficient to make our generals entirely certain. To this end, we must determine a policy towards our consolidation of the region, securing a barrier against the front's expansion before striking it down or launching a preemptive attack while the front is distracted with other matters. The white flags on the border. Oh boy. A series of white flags rising on our border with Tukhachevsky's West Russian Revolutionary Front has marked us as a clear next target for his expansionist desires. The radio message that accompanied the event as well as made no doubt of its ambitions towards us. Uh, as stated in the radio message, we shall have three days to surrender to the front to turn over the military to Tukhachevsky's command and make our lands ready to be administered by the Arkhangelsk government. If we're to surrender now, he continues. Or it continues. <clears throat> uh, oh, I, if we fail to comply, one more warning will be given. And, oh, if we're to surrender now, it continues, our general and government shall be pardoned and is free to go to exile or continue serving under the front. If we fail to comply, one more warning will be given, after which our government is no longer guaranteed to be pardoned. If this warning is not heeded, Tukhachevsky will promise we will meet nothing but total annihilation at the hands of the Red Army, which I just noticed, they took out Vologda. The various commanders scattered through usk Suslovsk have already been assembled, and a general call to arms in the name of the defense of the Republic has been issued. Ceasefires have already been called between various factions vying for power, and the people will await the government's response to this clear provocation. Provocation. With increasingly powerful front bearing down on us, and their banners visible from the border, it seems that the time has come to, bend, to either bend the knee or make a stand. They have 8 to 12 divisions. Oh boy. Mm, how much longer do we have to wait until we get just pulled from out them? We're going to need every division on the front. Get him to the front line. I don't care if he's inexperienced or not. We're going to tell him no. This is where we, you know gonna screw up or do well. Oh, there goes Kennedy. Bye, Kennedy. Actually, you guys are there. We're gonna circle as many divisions as possible. That's just the goal. We must make a stand, everyone. We must make a stand. And they'll probably go to war immediately. Oof. Not a bueno. So we might attack these guys, actually. Milkun. I don't want to lose the capital. We might just go poke him here. Uh, yeah, I might just poke him here to beat him up first. We'll see what happens, though. A final warning. If you want to read, actually, I've read this already before, but in response to a refusal of Tukhachevsky's initial terms, the front has delivered its final warning. Dark red flags fly over the border, visible from our outward positions. Beyond the horizon, sure, the Bolshevik armies are preparing to launch themselves for assault. And Vyaka is, has won, which is good. The latest terms for us here have been broadcast across the lines, clear and plain as day. We are to surrender immediately, dissolve our army, hand over all military equipment to the front, and allow their units to cross the border in order to prepare a stay for integration. Most notably, the provision stating that our governors and generals shall receive amnesty has been revoked. Oh boy. As critical hour approaches and our final preparations are made, panic deliberations begin behind the lines. Those less patriotic about our cause have begun to migrate southwards and away from the path of the invasion if it is to come. This is the final darkest hour before the storm falls upon us. Shall we surrender to the red tide? Or shall we stand strong and hope to overcome it? We have no choice anymore. We must bow. Pfft, come on, man. Well, this is not going to happen anyways. I wish we could do that one, but never. We stand for the Republic. So doing that is going to be a waste of time then. 
as he was going to auto bypass but the new oaths. The coalition lies in shambles, its members are feuding with each other both in the debating hall in the street and the National Assembly's aimless insurrection. If its representatives were to swear allegiance to one party, it would do much to restore public faith in the government, particularly as few citizens would believe that they had loyalty to anyone other than themselves. However, the question of who to swear loyalty to remains. It is still divided among party lines, and pledging allegiance to one would only unite the Assembly against them. Many deals and compromises will have to be made between leadership and representatives, but a united Assembly may just be possible. Rebuilding the monasteries, the territory once owned by the Order of St. George has fallen under our control, and our forces have begun to restore order to the area. As with all conquests that we succeed in, different regional questions must be addressed for different areas, and Ganey is no exception. The Order, as the name implies, was highly religious, and much of their funds were poured into monasteries and churches. Over time, however, many of these houses of worship have decayed, whether from natural elements, stray bullets, and shells, or German bombs, the constant among them being that most are in a state of disrepair. The right in Comey is predominantly religious, excluding Seraphs the clique, but the topic of funding to repair the churches has struck a nerve. Arguments fly back and forth between each side, those for it claim that, even ignoring the obvious religious reasons, such a move would undoubtedly win favor from the local populace. Those against it argue that such funding would be better spent on state matters, such as the military, and in the end, the decision must be made. Who matters more, God or the state? The churches shall be rebuilt. We have better things to spend money on? Um, despotism? Mm, I don't want to do this, but... Sure, why not? Cool. And when do they go to war with us? Oh, whenever they want, I guess. The storm breaks. As black flags rise on our border and the declaration of war is received over radio, the first Bolshevik artillery shells have landed within our territory. The war against the front is upon us, and we can only hope that our forces can break the onslaught of the Grand Marshal. Our men shall stand bravely until the very end, be it against chemical cloud armored column or infantry surge, and our officers are proud and prepared to fight. With the skill of our army and the fate on our side, we shall be the fortress that shatters the WRRF for the last time. If we are to fall, then let it be as heroes, and if we are to triumph, let us ring eternal in the halls of victory and history. Invincible and legendary, together against tyranny. To heck with you, piece of the garbage. We're going to move up there and try to encircle them, and probably fail doing so. Let's see what they do. Ah, we've called him an ally! Yes, please. No, we might just be a little cheeky here, try to go down this way. But we'll see what happens as we go up there, and uh, just do the best we can. Don't do too much here. Actually, um, having these guys... Penalized here is not very good. We can lose Sictifcar, actually, and it'll be okay. Uh, you know what? Let him come in. Mm, maybe. We might be able to do that, actually, and circle these guys, too. Hopefully, we can get up there quickly enough. Let's see what happens. See what happens. Oh, we got encircled ourselves. God dang it. The arrival of the anti-communist guard. Great news has arrived from a country, or for a country. It is no secret that the war against the WRRF, the vanguard of socialism in the region, has been a difficult struggle and one that has forced us to use everything we have at our disposal. After all, the front is the remnants of the old movement from the days of the w or the West Russian War, and has finally decided to claim its place as a formidable power in the country, thankfully for us. Who have dared to challenge it, we have found an ally in the hostile environment, and it is the anti-communist volunteer army, or guard. Today, in one of the many recruitment centers we have set up to help in mobilization, over 100 men appeared seemingly out of nowhere, requesting that they participate in the struggle against the socialists of the WRRF. When asked about their background, they made the situation much clearer. They are proud Russians from Onega, the warlord state famous for resisting the front against all odds with Finnish support. It seems that General Kropichnikov's regime has been successful in cultivating patriotic sentiment, of course. Our government and the high command have welcomed the arrival of the anti-communist guard, and a special unit from Onegans has quickly been organized and sent to the front. While it may not be much, it is still useful in this war. Especially when we don't have a lot of manpower. Go there and go there too. And how are we doing over here? Not bad, not bad. Keep them over there. And how are we doing over here? Oh, they did come in, which is not very bueno. I need you guys to keep them. Uh, can you guys? You guys can pin them there. There you go. Pin them there too. Because you guys are heading straight into there. They're trying to attack us. They're not going to win. Oh, we've been attacked over here too, which is not bueno. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. I need you guys to immediately move into there. That'll be good. Oh, come on. The new oaths? Against the party? Uh, strengthen the passionary. Now that the passionary is in power, the outside elements have outlived their usefulness and only serve to hold us back from our true vision. Let us cut the death blush away so the living core may grow stronger. Good. Kill them off. We're going to immediately go here and then just go ahead and take everything else. Ah, Vyaka. Welcome. We got two divisions encircled? Are you kidding me, man? 
the new vows. An interesting question has risen through the ranks of the Passionary once again. Oh, we have nine divisions. Who do we swear our allegiance to? It's never been much of a problem before when the Komi right was just that, a political allegiance, confined to only to the Komi Republic, but now that our realm is beginning to dominate Western Russia, it's becoming much more of a hot topic amongst the various factions that make up our own power base. Tabriski's group, as is common with them, are pushing for a decidedly monarchist vow. One that swears allegiance to the Tsar, Shevarevich, ever the populist, is pushing for the vow to be used for the people. Serov himself is pushing for the oath to be to the state. Finally, Gumilyov has used his influence to try and get the oath not to be the people, nor the state, nor the Tsar, but rather Eurasia as a whole. Each of these groups are using this moment to try and gain influence, an annoying habit of theirs, but in the tense political environment, it's only expected. In any case, we shall swear allegiance to the concept, the Tsar, the people, or the state. The concept. Seriously, these guys can go suck fat donkey pee-pee. Screw these guys, man. You guys should be able to kill these guys off. You really should be able to. Oh, uh, we can't control those guys, which is fine. Um, I'm actually surprised they haven't done able to, haven't been able to do too much. Oh, you guys are right there, huh? That's okay. Go and take out all this territory then. Actually, no, go right there. You gotta move up here so we can get out of here. We want to break this encirclement. If that's the case, you guys go right there, to there, to there, to there. Cool. You're fast, speedy boys, and that's what matters. Go in, go in. Why are you not going in? Go in. Jesus Christ, you take too long. My God. Seriously, man. Oh, my goodness. That's so stupid. How did you not win here? Are you stupid? Yes, these divisions are. And you're still going to go in there. You are still going in, going to go in there. We've killed off 16,000. We've lost 4,000. Not great, but not bad. They still have these truckies, which we do need to get rid of. So, boom, 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 boom. You go there, and then you go there. And we're going to deal with these guys as best as we possibly can. Um, let them come in. The most important thing is to make it sequence and kill them off like that. Alright, where are we at? You guys are moving in, which is good. They're still defending there very nicely. Go ahead and start moving into there and then move down there as well. And strengthen the passionary, good. And you guys go there too. Destroy that motorized. If we can destroy that, they I don't think do they, they might have tanks, they might they might not. I can't remember. But embolden the hardliners. Lev Gumilyov founded the passionary organization to promote his ideas of Eurasia. That idea and his proposed path towards realizing it came to lay the foundation for our work. Since then, the organization has come to encompass a much broader range of political thought and groupings, but it is now time to unite around one. If Gumilyov's faction carries the day, they will seek to consolidate the passionary and lead us to a future where we can rise above petty concerns and regionalisms to pursue the grand vision of a united Eurasia. They won't have us emulate either the West or the East, but embrace our position as a bridge between them. And we immediately go in, kill them off, kill them off, kill them off. Good, good, good. Go in and start taking all the territory down here. Actually, do they have this core? They might not. Which is not good for us, actually. That's a lot of divisions around here. Please do not get us encircled. For the love of God, do not get encircled there. Guys, can you please just kill them off? It shouldn't take this long. It really should not. It's a single division, god dang it. Oh, hello. Another division needs to die. You should do fine there. All right, I'm gonna send you guys. Oh, I want to see you guys back, but we'll have to wait and see. Do do do. Go. You guys go here to there. Sixty car will not be lost yet. Did you? Oh my God, these guys suck so hard. You guys suck such a fat hard one. It's not even funny. It's ridiculously bad over there. Are you kidding me? It's a single division for the love of God. Just kill them off. Like what we're literally doing to their soldiers right now, as they're taking out all of our victory points. Oh boy. Let everyone go. Go, 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 go. We don't have time for this. Except for you. You hold. How many divisions are they spawning? Where's where's Vyaka? How do what the bad word? How do we get encircled here? What the heck is Oh my god. This is so dumb, they have so many divisions, but new nationalism. Nationalism is an important force in the Republic and the lands beyond, and strongly felt by its population for far too long, how often, or far too often. It takes the form of petty regionalism. We're not Komi people, nor are we Russians. We are be beating heart of the Eurasian super ethnos. We must educate our people of the true place in the world, so that they will fully share in our struggle to realize the great state of the united Eurasia. Awesome. Please just go. Please just go, go, go. Come on, motorized. Or actually, I, IFVs. They're actually IFVs, so. Okay, we don't care about that. Go in there, keep them in place. Actually, don't even do that. No, don't do that. I said, for the love of God, don't do that. Don't do that. How many divisions do they have? What the heck? On the WRF. I mean, come on. I get that they're a successor state, but seriously, my God. 
how the hell do you guys get encircled here? I mean, that's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. Oh, poor Hadrish. Poor Hadrish. Kill them off. Kill every single last one of them off. Force. Okay, this is... this. I hate this. I don't know what's going on here, but this is pissing me off. How the hell are they t defending so easily? How? With air superiority, we are still losing this battle. That makes no sense. That literally makes no sense. Completely cut off. No supplies. And they can still win? Pfft, come on. That's so stupid. Keep these guys in place. We're running them over. Actually, go... Uh, no, both of you go there first. Eh, do that. There you go. Yeah, that, that is pissing me off. That was, was so stupid. Are you kidding me? But thank God they died. Eurasia forever. The path to reunification will be long and hard and full of struggle, but we will never falter. Our country is torn apart by petty warlords and traitors who espouse petty regionalisms to keep our people divided. We will not be fooled by them. Some now say that we should limit our goals. Russia, they say, is our motherland. They are wrong. We've always been greater, and the fate of our people always have been more glorious than the dead state of Russia. We will fight on until every petty warlord is beaten. We will fight until every Eurasian is gathered under our banner. We will not rest until our common destiny is realized. Eurasia forever. Cool. Seriously, how many more do we have to kill? They have 46 divisions. I mean, this is ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous, man. You know what? Uh, we really need to just kill off all the divisions. And then we can keep moving on. But Eurasian rallies. It is the Western culture that is a true danger to Russia, Gumilov stated, pointing into the crowd of his hardest supporters with a flourish as a silence. Only by eradicating the tide of liberalism that threatens our institutions can we send as Russians prosper and grow as a people. Cheers rang out and the, as the rally entered its third hour. To say the rally was a success was an understatement. Its supporters were inflamed despite the lateness of the evening, and the fires of Eurasianism burnt bright. But the purpose of the rally was not yet determinable to those who had called him. Indeed, his final statements would lead to the goal of the rally itself. While several parts of the speech had alluded to war with the other nations, some had alluded to unity at home. But between those two concepts, no middle ground could be formed for the hardliners of the rally. It was time to choose one instead of flipping between both concepts. Soon after, we thought Gumil Gumilov finished his speech with, Glorious unification awaits... Let's all join together as one. Unification awaits. More influence. More influence. I swear to God, man. Sometimes it just doesn't make any sense. You're going to take sick of car? Well, too bad. We have all our other VPs. And we lost our arsenal. That's fine. Whatever. Go in there and kill them off. Go in there, too. Actually, you keep them here. Don't let them move. You're going to go straight there. Yep. All the way to you keep him in place. Because everyone else is just going to go zoom, 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 zoom. You just go there. Cool. You keep him in place. That's all that matters. No, 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 no. You will die here like the dogs you are. You will literally just die there. Are you kidding me? How are they How are they able to do that, man? I swear to God. But a draft of constitution? Let's do that one. In order to strengthen our hold on Comey and guide it to a better future, we should draft a new constitution. Let's mark a break with a corrupt old order and let us show the people our good intentions. That the drafting process will show us where the prominent voices in our organization land on key issues. And who in our organization commands influence to push their favorite clauses through is just an added benefit, of course. Oh my god. Keep going, though. Keep going. We're actually going to win there, huh? What if you hold? You go there. That We might get the IFEs like, hurt or destroyed, but whatever. If we can circle at least one of these divisions here, that'll be worth it. Go, 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 go. Move your chubby little legs. Move your chubberinos. There you go. Good, good, good. Kill him off. Kill him off. There will be no peace for these pieces of garbage. Guys, just go up. Go north. Please, just take all the stuff. Good. Kill every single last one of them. Ah, strategic... Uh, cycles. We're struggling this much, even though we've got almost the entire land auction done, so. And these guys are four, usually between 14 combo width, or even 10 combo width, which, you know, 10 combo width isn't very good, but still. You find them, you kill them. You do not rest until they are all dead. Literally all dead. I want them all dead now. A focus on methods, though. The breadth of thought in our movement extends to political strategy. While there's a general agreement, we need to be diligent in managing public support and opposition. What measures we should use and where our focus should be is proving a difficult discussion. Some believe that information campaigns about our great work should be enough to keep the public on our side. Others propose we tie ourselves much more strongly to the Orthodox Church. There's also support for campaigns to suppress dissent and opposition more forcefully, with disagreement and centering more on the proposed extent and violence of them. It is time to make a decision. Kill them all off. Kill, 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 kill. You know what? Keep them in place. I don't care. Keep them in place. A new constitution? 
within the shadow of midnight. Lev Gumilyov did not sleep. Instead, while the others slept, and Gears turned, he waited. For the others, while there was m many more public meetings to come, the first discussion on the con new constitution was here, private, secure, and away from prying eyes. Shevarevich was the first to arrive, a polite grin on his face as he passed into the room like a peacock, strolling with an elegant yet leisurely gait. Gumilyov nearly rolled his eye at the display, for there were no crowds at this hour for him to woo with his honeyed words and silver tongue. Greetings were exchanged with impatience. Next came Serov, slowly entering and intently as his eyes swept across the room like a wolf eyeing the landscape for its next meal. Ambition was something all his guests had, but the former leftists had history they did not. Finally, the final guest slithered and silently his eyes slit and his smile unnervingly fixed. A reaction Sergei Tabarisky Papa Man commonly got from those he spoke with the befuddlement at best, tear at worst. All of his guests would have to say in the pepper rest paper recipe between the four men to garner legitimacy for the new state, and all of his guests eyed this, his position of power eagerly. All would have to be dealt with, but who to marginalize first? Igor's wings, who do we have to clip first? I think it was uh, reformists. So, Igor Shafarevich. That'll be good. You can hold. I don't want this division to die, but you gotta get in there. Oh my god. Well, you can't move, can you? You can't move fast enough. Your fat little legs. This is why we starve people. Because <laughs> you're too fat and you can't move fast enough. Scavenge for loot, that'd be good. Yeah, I don't think we have time. Why is this taking so long? And they're completely cut off. And that's not even their victory point, so. The matter of economic structure. A crucial facet of any state is the structure of the economy, and our constitution uh, needs to lay out how we will approach ours. The breadth of thought in our alliance means there are many competing ideas for how to address this. There is a general agreement that the government needs to be in control of several important sectors in the economy, but beyond that, there is little common ground to be found. A large faction contend that we must allow market forces to operate in non-strategic spheres of the economy. They say private enterprises will comp complement their state-run counterparts to provide greater welfare for all. The best way to achieve both would be uh, is to provision for private property rights in our constitution while also specifying that it can be overruled and under what conditions. Oh, look at this. We in a circle here? Yes, please. <clears throat> there are many, however, who believe that we can only realize our plans with a total command economy. Everything in the Republic belongs to the whole nation, and it is only right that the nation be empowered to mobilize every farmer, worker, and clerk to achieve its aims. Private businesses will always, by their very nature, undermine the same. The Constitution should, according to this faction, define all property as belonging to the state. Tabarisky's faction advocates a third approach. They say that it is these modern economic theories and structures that got Russia to the sorry state. We must cast away these foreign theories and look back to the heyday of Russia. The traditional way of life is what will restore Russia to greatness, and that starts with the economy. The Constitution must empower the state to make, take any measures necessary to turn Russians to where they belong. Private property? We need a command economy. A return, to, a return to tradition sounds best, but a command economy. Makes sense for us. Please just kill them off. For the love of God, please just kill them off. Go there, go there, go there. Come on, come on, come on. Oh my God, you are so incredibly weak. Weak and pathetic. I hate how weak and pathetic our divisions are. For the matter of civil structure. With power more secure, new options for the future of our state have come to the table as the Constitution begins its drafting. One such debate has recently come into view of our leadership, the role of the central government in relation to various regions, Tabaritsky. Of course, proposes that regional administrations hold no power, and the only central government would rule with an iron fist. Shafirovich, instead, proposes a letter of alternative federalism, leaving some power in the hands of regional administrations while the central government still rules strongly. Lastly, Gumilyov fight strongly for self-determination among the regions, instead forming a sort of confederacy. Tensions increase, but ultimately one side wins a day. Gumilov, yes. That'd be good. Oh my god. Can you just go and win? Jesus Christ, how strong are these people? This is ridiculous. 60,000 dead, and it's still not enough. You're gonna... I, I want to force the attack so badly. I want to do it so badly, but we just don't have the strength right now. It's ridiculous. That means we can end, though. Shevarevich poured himself another drink. Gumilyov erased another line he didn't like. Tabarisky accidentally tore another clump of hair from his scalp. Oh boy. Each of these men sat in their own homes, do dwelling on thoughts of the past and the future as they shamelessly tried to throw themselves into projects to distract from or alleviate these. Shevarevich knew he had to make both s some sacrifices and some compromises to get where he was at, uh, at the cusp of power. Yet, as he sat the bottle down, he couldn't help but worry. He felt well, like what he was doing was for the good of Russia, he swore to himself, and yet he felt himself drifting further from his principles as he climbed into the echo echelon of the party, but darn it was a long climb. Gumilov, as he always did, was polishing one of his rough theories, scribbling on an old sheet of paper at his desk. The time was coming when these would be fact, and he'd worked hard to near, to near that occasion. He didn't have the same way with words as his father, the poor dude, but he was having an easy enough time getting an idea out. Shame they wouldn't be stay on the pre page. As he scratched out each halfway decent sentence he wrote, determination and for a lack of better term passion had brought him to this point, but as evidenced by his writer's block, would it bring him any further than this? 
Tabriski, meanwhile, was on a roll. While Passion had brought Gumilov to the top and Shevervich had planned his way there, Tabriski rose in a frenzy that was his constant state. He had to be planning, moving, seething. Thus, while the rest of these in the household were asleep, he was tearing through maps ranging from 1600 all the way to 1962. Most of them were wrong, but he continued to look through them one after the other, other over and over in search of the true monarch of Russia. That was his goal after all. To rebel, to grow Russia like him was to control frenzy. Tearing, shouting, cutting, whatever you get, so you're there. Is there any way we can get more manpower? Because this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. It feels like these guys got buffed or something. I mean, this is so stupid. How how much of a struggle must we have to put in just to do okay here? I mean, my god. I hate the WRF so much. That is the single greatest issue when you have to fight these guys. No, you cannot let them leave. Force, I, I'd rather get you killed off. I would literally rather have you ki get killed off. And we gotta come ki killed off. Because of, uh, because of how weak the divisions are. I don't care. I really don't care. I'm sorry. But that is ridiculous. I hate fighting the WRF so much. But if you'd like to read about Consolidated the Block, please go right ahead. As well as Ultimate of the Neutrals and Cast Down Democracy, please go right ahead. Or as well as Preemptive Strike, because it doesn't matter since they're dead already. Share to the front. Man, we even had Vyotkins with us. And it meant nothing. So we'll go and do Purge Last Remnants or just Preemptive Strike. It should just go ahead and do whatever. So It should auto-bypass, right? Okay, I guess not. That is stupid. Yeah, that is... I swear to God. 60,000 dead. They had like five divisions, and they still wouldn't die. And they killed off another division. I mean, my God. I hate that faction so much. It's, it's just insane how, how difficult it is to beat them up. Every single time. Every single time. It's so ridiculously difficult to beat them. And it does make sense why they're difficult. I will say that. It does make sense, but my God. I, I never want to fight them again. I just never want to fight them. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Why not? Better guns? We do have enough guns. Someone declared a war in... Oh, Samara. Oh, God, I hate this one, too. Western Russia is extremely difficult to fight in. It can be extremely, extremely difficult. And it's just not fun sometimes, man. It's just not fun. Good. That's good. Share to the front. And now all these have bypasses, which is good. Okay. Purge the last remnants. The front has been cast down, but our work against Bolshevism does not end here. Throughout our Congos, there lies legions of officers and commissars, some of who have fought to the spread of the Red Plague through Russia since before Bukharin's defeat. There's only one option. We must neutralize our influence forever and always to ensure that Bolshevism never returns to our lands. There's only to be two possible fates for the Reds, a cold cell or a hot lead. Give them all hot lead. But these bunch of commies ruin the nation, and they want to do it some more. No, 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 no. Alright, so after that one, mop up the spare? We probably will. In our dash to consolidate power in the region, we've been forced to prioritize one threat over the other. The uh, threat we have mercifully ignored has continued to exist until now. We must utilize the resources of our newly conquered territory to cast it down, and finalize the consolidation for control over the region. Now, I hope to God we have enough time to at least core everything up here. I, I hope we can, because we literally have no manpower. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous, man. Absolutely redonkulous. But if you're still watching, thank you very much for watching. And continuing to watch as well. As much as I want to take two off, uh, we really need more guns. It's getting worse. Yeah, I think we got to. Just go and do that. That's fine. Cool. Oh, people's. Oh, yeah, I don't want to fight these guys. Mop up the spare. I want to kill every single one of them. Every single one of them. Oh, oh. He needs to get just destroyed. But there's all the pack. With the Reds gone and buried, our pact with the Tsars to the south have outlived its usefulness. Uh, Vyaka no longer represents a possible ally, but rather a rival for regional supremacy. The pact must be formally dissolved at once, and our force is prepared to strike south at a moment's notice. Vladimir, of course, does not need to know about this until the day comes. The Reds on trial. Finally, the Red Scourge has been purged from Western Russia. The hammer and sickle no longer waves over Arkhangelsk, but instead lies where it belongs, ripped and trampled, covered with mud and grime. It is the only place where such a perverse backwards symbol should lie. Many things will come in this new development, but one of the most important is a trial of the Red Army, as it should have been a half century ago. However, an interesting situation has cropped up, one that requires their attention. It has always been a habit of the Bolshevik to betray their nation, and it seems that this phenomenon has cropped up yet again. Numerous Red officers, when told of what they would be tried for, seem to have a sudden ideological change of heart. These rats in uniform seem to be more willing, more than willing to switch sides, betraying their old friends for a new job and a shot at survival. While well, it seems unlikely that these men, if they can be called such, will be any more loyal to our army than the old haunts, the army can always use experienced officers. Letting those who repent collaborate may be a controversial move, but it would certainly be a boost for our relatively green soldiers. The choice comes down to our leadership. You could use them? No mercy. Kill every single last one of them, including Tukhachevsky and Zukov. Every single last one of them is going to be gutted from head to toe. Put their heads... 
on display for everyone there. I don't care. That, that pisses me off so much, fighting the red sometimes. Sometimes it's, it's okay. Other times, it just... It makes me just want to throw my mouse at the computer screen and not make videos anymore. But anyways, whatever. Tell me how you really feel, Mr. Muckle Lover. <laughs> oh, God. But after we dissolve the pact, uh, we're going to do... Oh, topple the Tsar. Okay, I don't like that. I do not like how we're forced to go down a certain direction. I don't want to take out take out the Tsar yet. I, it's smarter for us to not do that and focus on Samara. Why are we forced to go down that path? That doesn't make any sense to me. But I guess, if we're forced to, I guess we're forced to. The time has come to strike south finally and secure the fertile lands of Yatka. The Tsar, the pretender of Vladimir III, may pretend that his army is a preeminent power, but we know the truth from the careful observation. The White Army is tired and with outdated tactics and aging generals. The time for the old empire has long since passed on. There can be no peace or compromises with the symbol of the distant, shameful past. There is only to be a swift strike over the Vyaka River, bringing an end to the last relic of the Russian Civil War. Yeah, I don't like this. Why? Why, why don't we get a choice? I, it's, I, I, I pr much prefer it when we have a choice and when we go to war with these people. I mean, yeah, with, like, you know, with focuses, it's totally fine and all, but, like, we should either focus on going to Samara or Vyaka. Like, why do we have to do Vyaka first, man? I know we have an alliance, and that's why I want to use our alliance while we have it. That just makes sense, right? Strike on the front? I mean, that's nice and all, but that basically did nothing, it seems like, for us. Yako wins Aslan? Okay. Oh, we saw some reds here? Power vacuum? No. Did we core everything yet? Oh, we got a little bit of manpower. Hey, we have enough guns, though. Look at that. Nice. Oh, we actually might have enough artillery, too. If we're going to have almost no divisions, we might as well uh, make our divisions as strong as possible. All right, so they've, they've definitely come up to the line now. Do we have any planes left? No. Oh, the word of Mladorosi? Push to the Urals? All right, uh, that sucks. But, okay, we get all the way down here. Purge Cousin Beck. Another piece of the puzzle. I like that one. Oh, we have to be a piece for this. Um, our appraisal of the Mladorosi was correct. It seems that an integration of Belzniki into our state is projected to go by without a hitch. The ideology of the Mladorosi continues to be a fascinating element, one that's quite appealing to many within our state. <clears throat> especially the followers of Tabaretsky. The development of Bezerniki can be greatly hastened by leaving its administration more or less untouched, by allowing the current government to exist with only minimal coverage or oversight. Oh, okay. Cool. I want to do that one just because I want better uh, coring times, but Aaron's no more. Uh, we're not a piece. We, I don't know why we can do that one. So, against a party? No, I, I'd love the extra PP, but... Uh, yeah, it depends on the moderates. No, we're kind of okay. Yeah, we're kind of out of focus as to do. I don't want to do that other stuff yet. Uh, where is our... These guys. You guys did, did okay last time. It wasn't great. And actually, I'm going to throw you guys over here as fast as possible so we can take these guys out quickly. Oh, let's take him. Oh. Okay, earrings no more. Oh. The Bashkir Ultimatum. Our tricky brethren. Cast down Bashkiria? Um... I'd rather do the Bashkir Ultimatum. Similarly to the Tatars, the Bashkirs are another Turkic ethnicity that has historically lived alongside the Russian people since time immemorial. They possess a strong sort of passionarity, akin to those of Russians. Despite our differences, we were meant to be bound together, and so we will dispatch a diplomatic mission to Ufa. If the Bashkirs are wise, they will accept our offer of union without resistance and join us in the halls of history. If they foolishly refuse, there will be no other option but war. And I want to do that just because it makes more sense. We're trying to get a big old united Russia, or Eurasia, our tricky brethren. The lands of Bashkiria are once more returned to us firmly under our rightful control. In the process of integrating the region, ass ass assigning administrators of beginning censuses, we must remember the most important component of dealing with our companion races, respect for their traditions and coexistence as fellow peoples of Eurasia, and the steeps, or steppes. Our passionarity is alike, and with them we are stronger than we would be alone. Cool. I like how we just get, went through all that stuff very, very quickly. If we can move fast enough, that would be great. Yeah, I'm not going to attack there yet. That'd be insane. Uh, can we scavenge? Oh, that'd be good. The performance is just way too strong. How is it so strong? I didn't boost it up at all earlier. And there goes Bennett. Hello, Papa Bennett. Hello there. Go, 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 go. Get that suck. Suck. Oh, uh, don't suck, but like, do well. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, they're gonna get in there first. Did they actually core that? They did. Okay. That's good to know. Don't worry about that. Just make sure they don't encircle us. You're not gonna win against us. Okay, they're attacking their move in then. Oh, there goes Cornwall. That's good. 
Come on, move, 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 move. Actually, who you guys hold, you guys to go down here and then do that. We might be able to circle them there, maybe. Oh, they have a Ben and Biatka. That's nice. Don't you dare get us in circle. Move, 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 move. Come on. Move your butts. Come on, man. I don't care if you suck right now. I really don't care. Get in there. Go. Go in there. And you're going to drive north. North, north, north. The re this, this stage of taking out enemies is always the, the absolute worst. Absolutely always the worst. I hate it so much sometimes. Ugh. How are you... How are you losing? Man, come on. Oh, we're going to get these guys encircled unless we kill them off here. Come on, come on. Go, 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 go. There you go. Nice. Keep these guys in place. I want you guys to actually go... You guys go all the way there. And go all the way to... It is Hefsk or something like that, so... Do not let them come in. How? How are you losing their militia divisions? My god, how? How the hell are this? I don't understand. Man, Komi is impossible to play. It's just so bad. Widespread cronyism? Jesus Christ. It's so bad to play as this nation. How, how, how did you lose against the militia? How? Especially when you have armor on. And they can't pierce you. How? It's not like we have, like, you know, military spending that we can cut or slash. I'm going insane doing this. And we've literally just gotten encircled. Oh my god. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Please just capitulate them as fast as possible. Please, 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 please. For the love of god, just do it. We lost perm. We got the, the mechanical plant, which is nice, but still. Ufu? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is so bad. Oh, they go to war with Biaka too? Come on, man. Just take it. For the love of God, please just take it. I don't want this division to die. I really don't. Oh, there goes Dolvanger. Unfortunate for him. Please tell me we got it. Please tell me we got it. For the love of God, please tell me we got it. I I'm, I'm so ready to be done with <laughs> trying to just do the best we possibly can here. We've taken the capital three or four times already. Please tell me that's enough. Please tell me that's enough. How many... Oh, we're probably going to get Perm. Oh, wait. Better improvement through a land auction. Go, 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 go. I don't even care if we get in circle. It doesn't matter. Get the VPs. Get the VP. Move, 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 move. Move your chubby little legs. Come on. I know what's over river. That should be it. That should be it. Thank God. Oh, my God. I apologize, guys. This has been an insane episode, but we'll finish this up tomorrow when we go to war with these guys. Which is going to be a pain in the butt as well, probably. So, um, secure the crown lands. Uh, indulge monarchists. Secure the border, probably. Along the long and porous border of the German occupation zone, numerous states have sprung up, forming a clear western flank to secure against a potential German invasion. We should prioritize securing this border strip and eliminating the various warlords that pose easy routes for a German incursion into Russia's heartland. Only we can be trusted to effectively defend against a German scourge, and a rhetoric towards the warlords of the West must reflect this. But if you enjoyed today's video, no matter how much rage I might be putting into it, please do consider leaving a like. It does help me out. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we're going to struggle against Samara and maybe struggle against Onega. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.